Greetings and welcome to this installment of Beam Analysis and Design. We are in the third video. If you're not quite sure where you picked up, you might want to check out the Area Moment of Inertia video and the Shear Force Bending Moment Diagram video. If you just want to see a basic stress analysis uh, set up here, then just keep watching. The problem statement says, calculate the maximum bending stress of a beam with uh, a particular cross-section and a particular load. So our cross-section looks like this, and we already did all the calculations for that. And our load looks like this, and we did all the calculations for that. So our bending stress is calculated using the formula bending stress equals mc over i or we can also use this formula m over the shape modulus where the shape modulus is equal to i divided by C. Now what are each of these things? This is our maximum bending moment. This is our area moment of inertia. And C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber. So whatever distance you can get, that's the largest that goes from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber. So let's look here. Here's our neutral axis right there. And the fiber that is the furthest away, fiber is just a, a term, uh, is probably up here or down here. Now, the total distance here is this 5 millimeters here, this 50 millimeters here, another 5 millimeters. So from top to bottom, we've got a total of 60 millimeters. Well, how far is the xx axis away from the top? Well, it's 60 minus this 35, which is the distance to the bottom. So we got 35 from there to the bottom, and the difference of 60 up to the top, which is 25 millimeters. So not only is this Y bar 35 millimeters, but it's also our C value. It is the furthest distance from the XX axis to our outermost fiber. Now, it might be important to find out what the stress is up on top because one will have compressive stress and one will have tensile stress. But in this case, we are just looking for the maximum stress. So we'll go back over here to stress analysis and we'll look at this one, M over S. Well, S is really good to be using if you have standard shapes, uh, such as uh, S shapes or W shapes or I beams, or C channels or two by fours, that kind of stuff where it's pretty standard what people use in industry. But if it's a built up shape like this one, and it's somebody kind of put together because it seemed to have the right combination or it just happened to be what they had on hand and they just built it up, um, could be a variety of reasons why they would have a built up shape. Well, then we have to use MC over I. Well, luckily, we have M, and we now have C, and we have I. So what does that look like? We'll use Excel here. Bending stress. And we'll say equals. And M is going to be right here. That in Newton millimeters. So we can just click there. Oops. There we go and then multiply by C. So we go over here to this value here, and C is our Y bar. And then we're going to divide by I, which is this. Now we have to make sure we get the units right. 
So bending stress is going to be 41.9 what? That's an important question. So I'm going to go here and we have our moment in Newton millimeters. We have C in millimeters. And then we have I in millimeters to the fourth. So I can cross out that and I can cross out that and get rid of two of those. So I'm down to two. So I have a Newton per square millimeter and this is equal to one megapascal. So I've got 41.9 megapascals and that's our bending stress. The next step is to find a design factor based on tensile strength and a repeated load. Now, and we are given that the material is nylon 6.6 and also given was this data from our friends at Microplastics and they have a lot of great data on their plastic that they want to sell you. And here are the nylon 6.6 mechanical properties, tensile strength, elongation, shear strength, and so on at 73 degrees. So we will use this value, 82.7 megapascals, because the problem says based on tensile strength. And it's a repeated load, so we need to uh, reduce our expectations by a factor of two. So our design stress is ultimate strength divided by eight. That's based on our formulas for design stress in the Mott Applied Strength and Materials book. It's probably a, a good rule of thumb for starters, but this is plastics, so uh, some strange things can happen with plastics, but we'll keep to this for now. And our ultimate strength, as we saw in our microplastics values, is 82.7 megapascals. 82.7 megapascals, all divided by eight and that gives us 10.3 megapascals now what what does this mean this means that we do not want our design to go over 10.3 megapascals there's a big problem is that we're already at 41.9 megapascals that is our actual stress that's if we loaded this up we'd be at 41.9 megapascals and we're looking at 10.3 as the most that we ever want to go over so that is not a good situation how do we characterize that well our design stress divided by our actual stress gives us our design factor n so this tells us uh, how much uh, we could go up to uh, compared to what we're actually doing. So if we had a design stress of 400 megapascals and an actual stress of 100, we'd have four times the strength that we actually need over what our material should take. So if we calculate this with 10.3, three megapascals and we divide that by 41.9 megapascals well we end up with an n of 0 0.25 if you want your design to work once maybe your n could be you know 1.00 but if you want it to last for any given period of time in a static loading situation, you want N to be 2. Now here, we need our N, in this case, with respect to ultimate strength, to be 4, 
and normally we would design for ultimate strength divided by two. So for repeated load, n should be four. We should end up with you know, something more like four over here or eight, not 0.25. So this is definitely not a good choice of material or it's not a cho good choice of a cross-section or perhaps both. So we're just going to show this comparison here, 41.9 megapascals, and say not a good choice. OK, so that's what we, our conclusion is. Well, I hope this particular video helped you understand a little bit more about the differences between design stress and analyzed stress or actual stress, how we calculate that stress on a beam, and why we are using MC over I instead of M over S. A little bit about the uh, units involved and how we end up with megapascals. Um, if you want to know uh, how Newton per square millimeter is a million Newtons per meter, I recommend you watch maybe one of my other videos where I explain that, or else uh, notice that this is square millimeter, and a meter is a thousand millimeters, and we square this, so you get a million, so that's why there's a difference of a million here. So you might want to do that on your own. Well, I hope this helped. And look forward to helping you out in the next video, too.